Hi everyone, welcome to week two of our hobo bag sew along. This is called The Ugly Naked Guy by Sincerely Jen Patterns. And we have two sizes, both are written in the pattern so I didn't change anything here. Um, you can see the size comparison to one another. The large is quite a bit bigger than the small. But they both have a pocket on the front, it goes down, and then we have this large compartment at the top that also has an interior zipper. So both of them have the same features, they're just different sizes. And I'll show you a couple of options that I've done. This one was the traditional way that the pattern is written with the zipper tab and everything written exactly as the pattern is. And this one I changed a couple of things. I did um, put the zipper in the seam here on this one. And on the interior, I've used waterproof canvas, which helped eliminate a little bit of interfacing. And it gives it, you can clean it out a little bit better if it gets yucky in the bottom and everything. So on the one we're doing today, I've cut out the small. And the procedure's the same, so it doesn't really matter which one you've chosen. You'll have to look at your pattern to make sure you get your zipper lengths right. And there are a couple of seam allowance differences, but it's, it's not very much. So I'll go through those as we go. Um, the fabric I'll be using is this Planet Collage, which we'll be getting to Royal Pixie Custom Fabric coming next month, so keep an eye out for that. We have a whole new round coming of awesome prints, so go ahead and gather your supplies and let's get to sewing. Okay, the first piece that you need is the handle connectors. They are these little 4x2 pieces, and you'll be putting your rectangle rings in these. So we fold them in half with the short ends together, so it makes a two by two square. And then open it back up so you can see your middle. Put these in toward the center, each side in toward the center. And then fold it in half again on that original crease that you made, okay? And I'll fold both of them before I sew them. Makes it a little easier for me. So again, we fold the center so it makes a two by two square. In toward the center, in toward the center, and then together. Okay, so we sew down each side of this. I recommend if you don't have a walking foot to sew the same direction on each so that it doesn't get twisted. If you sew down one way and up the other without a walking foot, it can cause some wrinkling issues. So we have these two. We're going to do the same thing with the handle, only we're not going to bring, obviously, the short ends into the side. We'll be doing the long end. And my handle is much longer than yours. I've decided to make it into a crossbody this time. So I've done, I think this is about, this is the width of the fabric for the fabric. So it's about 58 inches long, but I'll need to cut off some for the ends, obviously. So you do the same thing that you did with your handle connectors. You'll fold it in the middle, like so. Fold it to the middle. This is easier to do down on the table, but I'm trying for you. And then you'll fold these in together. Okay, I usually pin the whole length of it and then sew it together. So you know how to do that. Sew down each edge just like we did the handle connectors. Okay, the next step is to sew some of the panels together. So the first one we'll be doing is this front center top and you'll put these right sides together 
and you see how they curve up on the one side. We sew the short side together first and it's with a half inch seam allowance on all of these. So what I want you to do is make sure you grab your measuring gauge or a tape measure or something. I usually use this and measure out half an inch so you know exactly where your half inch is. It's very, very important that you have the seam allowances correct on this. So sew your short end on this one. And then we open it up and press your seams out. And with all this interfacing on here, we have two layers of interfacing. It really holds this well. You don't have to iron it usually. And you top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the seam on each side. And obviously the top stitching is very visible, so be careful when you do this. What I usually do is find a place on my foot and I keep that seam lined up right with that place on my foot and then I flip it over and do the same thing so that it's always the same space apart from my seam. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Sorry, I'll do it like this on this side. So you can see the seam there. It looks nice. This is a feature of this bag, so make sure you do your top stitching nicely. You'll go ahead and do the same thing with the small, well not small, small or large, front, center, bottoms, and obviously these are the same, so it doesn't matter which side you do this one, you can do it on either side. So you might pick out which thing you want more on which side. Do this one with half an inch seam allowance as well. Okay, and then we'll top stitch this too. So press that, and I usually just finger press it and it's enough. Just finger pressing it to keep the seam open. Line that seam up with that place on your foot and keep it right there the whole time. I'm just pushing this seam out as I go so that it's nice and flat. it over and keep that seam right in that place on my foot that I've chosen. Okay, so this will be the front and this is the front top and inside we'll have our zipper, but we'll get to that in a minute. We can also do the back center panels and these ones are similar where they have the curve up so you want to sew this side the the shorter side together can pin these before you sew if you want. I just find they don't really move very much with all that interfacing in there. Flatten this seam out really good. And top stitch. Make sure you catch that seam. Mine got flipped a little bit. 
You want to catch that seam so it plays nicely. Okay, and that's the middle of your back. All right, and then the last ones that we will do like that are the side panels. Okay, and you should have four of these. So we'll be making two ends of the bag. And you put these right sides together and the curve should be together as well. So we'll be sewing the curve. And when we do that, when we lay it out flat, it'll stand up a little bit and that's what gives the bag a curve. So we'll be sewing the side with the curve this time. Still half an inch. I'm just going to sew them both together before I top stitch them. show you when you open this up see how it has a little bit of a curve that's what you want it gives the bag its its shape okay now go ahead and top stitch these I won't do it on film because you've watched me top stitch three other ones so I will go ahead and do the zipper install with you so you want to go ahead and grab your front your front center bottom so it should be this rectangle piece and you also want an eight inch zipper, sorry, nine inch if you have zipper tape. And then um, we have a pocket. So the front pocket lining here. Okay, so you take your zipper and I'll show you how to install your zipper head. Okay, so make sure, look on your zipper and see whether it's the left or the right one that is above the other. And on mine, it's the right one that's one notch above the other. So put this on and then you have to kind of finagle it in there, but make sure when it comes out the other side that the right one is one tooth above the other. Okay, so I've slipped it on, and this one is one tooth above the other, so we know that we have it on straight. Okay, I do like the double-sided zippers for the front because it, it gets flipped quite a bit, so if you can, look for double-sided ones on this. So you want to take your front center panel and put your zipper down on top, and it should be the exact same width. And if it isn't, then you haven't done your seam allowance here in the middle correctly or something. So you need to look at that because having this the wrong length will affect your bottom and everything later on. So we want to attach our zipper with a quarter inch basting stitch. So we shouldn't need our zipper foot just yet since we're just basting this on. put our front pocket piece on top so that your zipper is sandwiched in between. Okay, so we're sandwiching our zipper there. 
and we'll switch to our zipper foot. Okay, so we have our zipper foot on and we want to put the lining on with our full seam allowance at 3 eighths of an inch. So again, if you need to measure it out on your metal plate where 3 eighths of an inch is, I would definitely recommend that. You want your seam allowances to be correct. If you use a number three zipper or an all-purpose zipper for this part, the seam allowance is only a quarter of an inch instead of three eighths, so make sure you watch that. Okay, so we have our panel here. We want to flip this so that our zipper sticks out. Okay, and the instructions say to top stitch this, but I have my zipper foot on and I like to top stitch with my other foot, so I'm going to put the top on before I top stitch and I'll top stitch all at once. So the next part is to put your, this funny shaped piece, the top of your front along the zipper and the other lining with the right side towards your zipper. So we're again sandwiching our zipper in between. So I wanna show you the layers right side together with the zipper is your exterior and then we have our lining for the panel. One thing to note here is to make sure that your seams for the middle match up. If this is off it's going to look silly so make sure that your middle seam here matches up nicely and I would pin that and you can even sew your front exterior on first and then do your lining with it. I'm just going to do it all at once here. It's up to you how you want to do it. You want to make sure that this seam is lined up. That's the most important part. Okay, so again we will do 3 8 inch seam allowance here for that zipper. And this is why I like to keep my zipper foot on because we're doing another zipper the other side of the zipper. That way we're not changing, changing our foot. Okay. So now you can see you have your top and your bottom there. Okay, so now we'll switch back to our other foot. I like top stitching with my regular foot better. I feel like it pulls the fabric better. So we'll top stitch, turn your pocket down and top stitch this one up. Okay, so you're gonna top stitch your top. Again, find your place on your foot there and keep it all even. That way all of your top stitching is even. Okay, and then when you top stitch the bottom, make sure that you flip your pocket up. Just, just the top part. So it should be open like this. And then you top stitch the bottom. This one's a little bit harder to pull down sometimes. Make sure you keep your fabric pulled away from that zipper. So 
now you have a pocket. Now you pull your, let your flap go down for the pocket. So this is the pocket here. You have your exterior bottom and two pieces of pocket. But you can see that one of them is a little bit longer. So we want to go ahead and trim that off. Make sure it all is laying flat before you do that. You don't want to trim anything off that shouldn't be trimmed off. And absolutely make sure that you do not cut your exterior, only the pocket. You're only cutting one side of the pocket lining. Okay, so I want to make sure that you can see my exterior is out of the way. And this doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to fold it in on itself later, so it's just rough cutting there. Okay, and we want to, we can baste this whole thing together with a quarter inch seam allowance because we'll be doing a three eighths, or sorry, half an inch later. So let's just do a quick quarter inch basting down the side to keep this pocket all in line. side. I like to go down the same way on both sides so there's no wrinkling or anything like that. Okay so there's your front center pocket now. Make sure you don't run your zipper off the end. But that's where we're ending today. That was steps 1 through 11, and we'll pick up some more steps next week. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.